The glass might not be the best place to be right now, it baby. It probably isn't, but I want to keep an eye on the horizon to see if I can see any funnels. This is where we are. Rotation. Farmington. Super suit is on. You got boogers in my nose. My eyebrows look like a. All right, damn fix yourself. Creature. Fix yourself. It's 130 feet deep off our dock. Hey guys, what's up? It's Pascal and Mo. What's going on? Art of Adventure. Welcome back to our channel. Today we are in Chile. 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 Uh, where are we? Missouri? Bonterre. 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 And I don't know what it means. It's an old mining community. You can see that there's lots of uh, mining equipment behind us. Pretty sure it was a lead mine. So what happened with this flooded mine is cool. It like captured the mining world like like it's like in a time, time capsule. capsule. Ooh. <laughs> so I'm gonna get to go down and see it. She is. Yeah, Mo's, Mo's. I'm gonna keep eye from up here. Gonna try to stay one. warm because like I said, it is cold. We had tornadoes come through last night. Luckily, Scary nobody stuff, was, by the way. yeah, it was pretty freaky. Luckily, no one was hurt. No one was hurt. Dozens of places destroyed though. So yeah, bad. our thoughts and prayers are with those folks today. Certainly. We're going down in this mine, guys. Yeah. Wish us well. You're going down this mine. I'm going down in this <laughs> mine, guys. And yeah, we're gonna talk about it. Wish me well. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, before I add Deep Earth Explorer to my resume, let's talk about the city of Bonterre, Missouri. The town sits just about an hour south of St. Louis. The French words, Bonterre, mean good land or good earth, and for good reason. This land was once the world's largest producer of lead ore. The mine was open for 75 years and then closed in 1962. That's when the water pumps were turned off and the billion gallon lake was formed. There is 100 feet of visibility in this lake year round. Bonterre is a bucket list dive for me and I am stoked. Super suit is on. Well, halfway. Now we go diving. We're actually standing on top of the mine. It's under, under here. My guide, Jim, started things off with a pre-dive briefing. We're going to drop down. We're going to do two skills. Everybody has to do those. Jacques Cousteau did them when he was here. So. As you can see from this map, the mine is huge. The underwater caves stretch for miles in each direction. They create a maze of tunnels right under the city. There are dozens of different planned dives you can do with the help of the guides from West End Diving. Once Jim made sure I was comfortable with our diving plan, here we go. He opened the old mule entrance and we started our journey deep under the earth. I was quickly reminded this was once a working mine. There are all kinds of cool artifacts still on the grounds. As we made our way down one step at a time, I couldn't help but ask myself, how the heck did I get here? While I've been open water scuba certified for more than 20 years, I really hadn't done much diving in recent years. But in 2021, I felt the bug to get back in the water. In March, I tagged along with Mo for his discovery dive at Vortex Spring. This summer, I signed up for advanced open water and did my first night dive, a deep dive, and four shipwrecks. I quickly followed that up with a cavern class at Blue Grotto. Alex, my dive buddy in that class, told me about Bon Terre. And well, it was an adventure I decided I just couldn't miss. So here I am, 150 feet below the surface of the earth, and I'm about to explore much, much deeper. The first thing I realized was just how dark it is down here. Yeah, I don't know how much of that's gonna come out. Jim took the kayak to turn on the rest of the lights. With one flip of the switch, 
50,000 watts of illumination exposed a whole new world. The giant pillars and mammoth archways really show their size in the glow of the bright, colorful lights. Normally, there are 10 scuba divers, a guide, and a safety diver on each adventure. On this day, Jim and I had the whole mind to ourselves. Once I was all suited up and looking rather ninja-like, there was one thing left to do. Here we go. Jump into the 58 degree water. I'm from Florida and even with a five millimeter wetsuit and hood, I have to say, it was shockingly cold at first. I started to warm up as we did a surface swim over to our first dive spot. The views of the cavern are amazing. The underwater world is even better. There are abandoned mining artifacts all over this mine. And one of the coolest things about this dive adventure, you can actually touch and interact with the relics. We saw old drills and ore carts frozen in time. The guides urge you to pick up and handle the tools. It's really cool. I'm not sure how this old boat got down here, but I'm digging it. Look, someone etched the words dive tribe in the minerals that coat the surface. Since there's no sunlight in the mine, the typical plants and algae you see on most dives don't exist down here. The minerals also create a sort of haze, almost smoke-like at times. You can see it manifest in the beam of the flashlight. Kind of spooky. Jim guided me through a tour of various mining tools and eventually we entered our first overhead environment. This particular tunnel was pretty wide. It's dark, but with the guide's flashlight, you can see the air bubbles dance along the rocky ceiling. I'll be honest, I did get a bit disoriented and even kind of spooked during this part of the dive. I can't tell you how important it is that you scuba this mine with a guide. All divers have to start on trail one, then go to trail two, then progress one trail at a time. I have a decent number of dives under my belt, and I have to tell you, these dives are challenging. It's dark, like really, really dark. If you have the tendency to get claustrophobic, this may not be the adventure for you. Luckily for me, Jim was great. In between dives, he talked me through what probably spooked me and reminded me I had the skills and passion for these dives. Okay, let's go. Our second dive together was epic. We played with some ore carts and tools. I tried to lift a gear that couldn't have been bigger than a dinner plate, but felt like it weighed a thousand pounds. There was even a game where you try to toss a torpedo underwater. My first try was kind of a dud. But look how far I got that sucker to fly my second go round. That's right. In the back of my mind, I knew a challenging part of the dive was coming up. During the pre-dive briefing, Jim told me about a tight mine shaft we would have the opportunity to swim through. Honestly, I wasn't all that sure about it, but as we approached, I gave Jim the okay sign and into the mine shaft we went. This tunnel is pretty tight. I'd say I only had a foot or two of clearance on any side of me. It was dark, it was cold, it was scary even, and I did it. It felt really good to overcome that fear. And it turned out one of the coolest parts of the dive was sitting just on the other side of that tunnel. Check out this old elevator shaft. It looks like it goes down forever. Something about it just makes this whole experience feel real. This was a real working mine. Men would come to work every day and take this elevator to the depths of the mine 
to do dangerous work. Incredible. You know I couldn't leave the mine and finish the dive without making my own mark. So on the same steps where miners would start and end their day, I made it known that Art of Adventure was here. We would be deep earth explorers together. <laughs> Y'all, that was super sick. I wasn't 100% sure after the first dive. I was a little, I don't know, exhausted, tired, freaked out, something. I did it, but I didn't feel great. Second dive, baller. <laughs> Went under two overhangs. <sighs> that was really cool. I'm stoked. Beth, Bonnie, and Terry. There are two bass that live in the waters at Bon Terre Mine. Yep, say hello to Bonnie and Terry. Workers actually have to feed the fish since there are no plants that live in the water. There is, though, a nursery of sorts about 80 feet deep in the mine. Gotta have music for the plants. Of course, the plants can't grow naturally since there is no sunlight. The UV lights are set up to help them grow, and there's music to help them thrive. That was sick. Jim took good care of us here at Bon Terre, yeah. where we were scuba diving. They do other things here like boat tours and walking tours. Yeah, place is sick. Hopefully I get a chance to check out the, the tour next time. They, what, didn't, they didn't have a boat tour available today. So. What was your favorite stat? Uh, it was at one point the tallest cave in the world, 375 feet from top to bottom. It's a pretty, uh, pretty extensive lead mine. It's big. It's, it's impressive. Yeah. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit that like. And go ahead, you're already there. Hit that subscribe button. If you need any, any of our tools and equipment, you can also find that below. It helps us keep us on the road. So yep. Click that. Click those links, yo. Click it. And just remember, all of these experiences make, make up the art of adventure. So go, what do I gotta do? Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Come on now. Go get it. <laughs>